Hello and welcome to a very special episode of the Peter Mackay Motorsport Podcast. Today is the next instalment in our Icons of Scottish Motorsport series and today is a very special episode because today we're going to talk about my lifetime hero, Colin McRae. Um, Colin McRae was, a, it's quite simply, a legend of motorsport, not just Scottish motorsport. He was the World Rally Championship, World Rally Champion and back in 1995 at the age of 27 and to this day he remains the youngest person to win that um to win the World Rally Championship. He won 25 World Rallies uh, and raced for the likes of Subaru, um Ford, Citroen, Skoda um and 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 a few others uh, as as well. Colin is probably the most famous world rally driver ever, even though he only won world title, one world title. If you were to stop somebody in the street and ask, ask them to name a rally driver, they would probably say Colin McRae. A big part of that is to do with um, the very, very successful video game franchise Colin, Mc, Colin McRae Rally, which started off in 1998 and has sold three million copies worldwide and has actually spawned another series of video games called Dirt Rally which still uh, exists to this day and is still the definitive um, rallying video video game and Colin McRae was very much a part of that and his um, his profile at the time meant that he was the ideal fit for that video game but also his character was he was also just perfect for for creating that kind of superhero character around uh, around his name and his uh, his profile. Um, so he was a very special man um, on and off the the stage. Um, incredible driving style, maximum attack all the time, and it very much was either a, a win it or bin it style. Um, and that was what really drew Colin to people. You know, he was he was quite human in that sense that you know that people could see that you know he could do things that nobody else on the planet could do at the at the wheel of a rally car but he was also prone to mistakes just like you know every regular man uh, man or woman on the street so that that i think that really endeared him um to 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 people and he had a very laid back character very um very down to earth as well uh, and i think that that was really what what made him so so special Colin McRae was had a big influence on my early love for for motorsport. Um, and we'll talk a lot th- throughout the podcast about 1995 and and his World Rally Championship winning year, which was still remains one of my earliest memories, um, one of my happiest childhood memories, seeing Colin win the World Rally World Rally Championship. But um, funnily enough, Colin McRae always used to appear at Christmas time in our in our household. Um, you know, I remember when the uh, I, I, one Christmas when I, I had my skeleton Skeletric set. Um, do you remember Skeletric? Yeah. Um, this is my Skeletric set. I remember getting a Subaru Impreza WRC 555 Impreza WRC Skeletric car with Colin McRae's name on the side, and that was oh, that was that that was like the real thing to me at the time. The following year, I remember when the Colin McRae Rally came, game came out for the PlayStation. I got a copy of that for my Christmas and a Jordan F1 steering wheel for 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 driving it with, which was oh, which was just fan fantastic. Um, so you know, com- combined with the video game, the Skylastrix car, and watching watching it on Sunday Grandstand as well, Colin McRae had a huge impact on my love for for motorsport. And I think if it weren't for him. Would have would my love of motorsport been the same? Possibly, it might have just flourished at a later point. But Colin was certainly the biggest influence on why I, why I love motor racing. He just just the the kind of maximum attack um, driving style. I just just thought it was the coolest thing uh, ever. And do you know there were there were millions of people like me all around the world where Colin had a similar impact. You know, um, following you know Colin's sad um, sad death in two thousand and seven in a tragic helicopter accident and along with his son and two family friends. A year after that event, um, a memorial event was held in Colin's memory um, in 2008, here in Perthshire, actually, um, where I'm from, um, where the who's who of rallying came to came to Perthshire to compete in this event. You had, you know, um, Jimmy McRae, Alistair McRae, Chris Meek, Ari Vatnan, David Richards, Travis Pastrana, 
Ken Block, you name it. There was so many that came that came along to to take part in 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 that event and honour Colin and. 55,000 people lined the stages which is you know it would be an incredible incredible turnout at any world rally nowadays let alone um uh, an event in 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 Perthshire um so he really meant he meant an awful lot to an awful lot of people um and has left quite a legacy uh, on on the sport so let's talk a little bit about the early days how Colin got into rallying like many people at that time in Scotland you know getting into rallying or motorsport was generally just a bit of fun um, and was really really popular um, particularly in in and around the borders um, uh, in Dumfries and Galloway in in Scotland where you know local young farmers would get get together get a car and and go and have a go at some some rallying so it was very popular uh, at that time and Colin um, got you know obviously his father was a very 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 successful rally driver five times British champion uh, and at that time you know I'm sure um, watching his dad uh, you know going and winning rallies and going off driving all these amazing cars I'm sure that left quite an impression on on Colin and also forged you know the talent that he would have um, later on uh, in life uh, his first rally in fact though was was actually um, he went and undertook that rally without the knowledge of his parents um, him and a group of friends from the Coltness Car Club went to race in the Kames rally uh, in a borrowed Hillman Avenger um, but once um, once Jimmy his father got, got wind at Colin, of Colin's ambition to go rallying um, it very much became um, he thought well better to better to join them than beat them and, and uh, Jimmy managed to to, 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 give, to have a huge influence and help on Colin's early career with you know exploits in Talbot Sunbeams and um, SMT Novas and th- all, all kinds of things and then also creating sponsors to go and have a go uh, in, in the RAC rally and a Ford Sierra Cosworth and all these sorts of things. One of the er- one of the most interesting stories when I was doing some research um, for this episode, um, I never knew this, that um, Collins McRae's first rally win back in 1988 in the Tweedies Rally, he actually had his then, well, his his soon well, his, his future wife Alison uh, co-driving for him, which I thought was quite quite interesting, and that's sort of an, an um, a wee example of what it was like, you know, those days. It's different different to rallying now, where you, you know, you'll 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 usually you'll, you'll need to find a professional co-driver and all this, but in those days it was just you know anybody who you could rope into uh, rope into sitting beside you, and I can imagine there might have been people who, knowing Colin and his driving style, how <laughs> they might have been a little bit um, a little bit hesitant to get in into into the seat of a of a rally car with him but really but you mentioned the RAC rally Colin McRae really burst onto the scene in the 1990 RAC rally in a Ford Sierra Cosworth um an event where he had multiple um, multiple accidents, but still managed to get keep the car going, um, hold, held together by a borrowed bolt from a farm gate, um, but still managed to bring the Ford Sierra home in sixth place ahead of all the other works drivers. So it was very clear that at that time that, that Colin had incredible pace uh, behind the wheel of a rally car. But at the end of 1990, there was no 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 professional program. There was no drive no drive left for for Colin, and it looked like at that point that his rally career was about to stall, despite having um, despite having some real some real promise. Um, but luckily, um, his father Jimmy managed to to use his influence and his stature within the um, within the rallying fraternity to try and set something up. And Jimmy picked up the phone um, to David Richards, the owner of ProDrive, um, who were starting to to run the Subaru rally cars at that point, uh, and asked um, asked David if if there was anything available for for Colin for the following year. And David Richards hadn't had hadn't had the plan to do that but he was so impressed by Colin uh, and had been watching him from a distance that he thought well maybe I can put something together so he approached a long term backer of his Rothman Cigarettes um, in order to back um, a 
effectively a rallying apprenticeship for Colin where he would enter into the British Rally Championship in uh, a Subaru Legacy uh, at, at that point um, and would, when he wasn't racing the the, um, the Subaru Legacy, he would be working in the workshop at ProDrive, driving vans and going along to all the World Rally Championship events trying to learn um, how how the business worked and uh, and and how world level rallying worked and I think that 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 early apprenticeship was was crucial to to Colin's you know future success as well and straight away um, Colin delivered in 1991 he became the British Rally Champion winning some iconic events like the Circuit of Ireland Rally and the Manx Rally uh, as as well um, so by that point then he was really starting to make some uh, make some inroads and really starting to showcase his talent. In 1992, he was given the treat to go and compete in the World Rally Championship for the, uh, at Finland. Um, now, Finland is one of, uh, it's probably the most famous rally in the world, um, the Rally of, Thous- of a Thousand Lakes. Finland is so famous for being one of the fastest rallies in the world with enormous jumps, um, huge jumps, really fast flowing roads lined by trees. It's probably one of the most dangerous rallies in the world. Uh, absolutely incredible and very much a specialist event, um, normally dominated by Scandinavian drivers, very, very rarely won by non-Scandinavian um, drivers. You know, a couple of drivers who have won it in recent memory who weren't Scandinavian. Chris Meek won it once uh, and Sebastian uh, Loeb uh, won it as uh, as as well, um, so Colin's first um, Colin certainly didn't win <laughs> his first uh, his first entry to Rally Finland. In fact, when he was there, he was given strict instructions by boss David Richards to take it easy, build up their your pace, um, get some experience, get to the end of the rally, and 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 keep going on your progression. Colin completely ignored this and went absolutely flat out. The only way he knew he had one speed, Colin McRae, it was flat out or not at all. And he managed to roll the car thirteen times over the course of this rally, but. Each time he came back with the car um, crumpled, the team would get get in there and and you know bash it back into shape and get it back and running for the for the rally. And at that time, he became an absolute hero overnight in Finland because he was so fast and so spectacular. And when he kept it, or when he kept it on all four wheels, was exceptionally fast. And the Finnish rally fans just loved him straight away and would continue to do so um, from fr- from then on. But uh, I can imagine his boss, David Richards, having a car with uh, that's been rolled 13 times. I can imagine that must have got quite quite tiresome after, um, after a while. But they carried on, and in 1993, Colin, he probably had made the milestone moment in his career. In 1993, he won a rally that would become a very happy hunting ground for him, the Rally of New Zealand, um, winning Subaru's first ever world rally in the Legacy Rally Car. So at this point, um, the Legacy Rally Car was in, heading towards the end of its service, but Subaru were determined that the Legacy would, would score a rally win before they moved on to the new Impreza that would be introduced in 1994. And of of course, the Subaru Impreza um, to this day is still um, a hugely significant car uh, in the in the World Rally Championship, uh, and, or in World Rallying, I should say. Um, but they managed to win with the Legacy. Colin won his first World Rally in New Zealand in the Legacy. It was, it was Subaru's first World Rally win, and it was the first win for a British driver outside of the United Kingdom. So that was at the point where Colin McRae really stamped his mark of of something that had not really been done before in the UK and set this set the foundations for what rallying would become in the UK and what you must consider as well is that there are only really two British drivers who have who have actually succeeded at the very highest level uh, in world rallying you have Colin McRae and you have Richard Burns and that's it they're the only two guys who have got to the very very top of the sport and become world champion and they came world champion or all around the same time Colin in 1995 and Richard in 2001 and since then it's been complete domination from um <laughs> from French guys called Sebastian who have won the last sort of 14 world titles or so so 
that started off the kind of the real international story of Colin McRae and that was the the first step on the ladder of him becoming a global um, a global superstar. Of course, at those in those days, we didn't have WRC all live like we do today, where you can watch every stage live wherever you are in the world. Um, but at those times, it was a little bit more difficult to 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 follow the rallying. But that didn't stop um, uh, Colin's brother Alistair and some friends, Robbie Head, very successful um, rally rally driver as well. Um, they were all back at Robbie Head's house, drinking him out of a house and home, waiting for the results to to come through. Um, and uh, waiting to to hear of of Colin's win, which of course he he um, he delivered upon. In 1994, though, uh, it was looking pretty rocky again. So Colin's career looked on the rocks again. David Richards had really of ProDrive, his boss, had really grown tired of um, all the repair bills and trying to control Colin, and was on the cusp of of firing him. Um, but. In true Colin McRae fashion, he pulled it out the bag when it really mattered and delivered exactly when he needed to with another win in New Zealand in the new um, Subaru uh, Impreza and um, an, an RAC win, the, um, what's now Wales Rally GB, the British Rally RAC, winning by three minutes um, and in doing so saved his career and was retained by ProDrive and by Subaru. Now, what was really cool at that time back in uh, 1994 was Colin was his teammate was a guy called Ari Vatanen who's a bit of a bit of a world rally legend in himself um, world rally champion back in 1981 and um, with David Richards as co-driver funnily enough and um, Ari Vatanen when Colin came into the team Ari Vatanen took Colin out um, in the the Subaru rally car at the time and Ari Vatanen thought well I'm gonna I'm gonna show I'm gonna show this young kid what it's all about and went absolutely flat out along this test road and rolled the car many many times over <laughs> trying to show off to 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 Colin so I think both Ari and Colin they were just ah oh, they were they were they were um they were definitely a perfect match as uh, as as teammates so 1995 1995 is will go down in history as one of the most famous and the most dramatic seasons ever in the World Rally Championship. And it was 1995 where Colin eventually triumphed and won the World Rally Championship. Unfortunately, Colin got off to an absolutely awful start with mechanical failures, um, you know, accidents, and was miles behind in the championship as they approached mid-season. But a stroke of luck came when his teammate, Carlos Sainz, and the other Subaru, um, Carlos Sainz, while training on a, on a mountain bike, fell off uh, and, and, and injured himself and had to miss a couple of rallies. And in doing so, um, gave Colin an opportunity to catch up, which Colin um, a grasp with both hands uh, and did so and it all came down to the final two rounds of the year in at Rally Catalunya and um, what we now know as Wales Rally GB or RAC as it was then now in Catalunya was was well one is still one of the most infamous stories uh, in rallying so on the Saturday night with one route one day to go Carlos Sainz was in the lead by eight seconds um, David Richards, team manager of uh, the Subaru World Rally team run by ProDrive, decided that he says, right guys, we've got a world championship um, for the manufacturers to win here. Let's, we're, 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 we're in the lead. Let's, let's just hold station. Carlos, you, you can, you can out, you can keep the win and Colin, you follow behind and that's the order. And of course, Colin completely ignored this order of course he thought well we're going for a we're going for a world title here um i don't care about the manufacturer's title i'm going to i'm going to go out and win this and of course um it, it it was later reported that carlos had been winding Colin up a little bit saying oh I, I don't need team orders to beat you which of course it really did quite literally wind <laughs> wind Colin up and of course Colin went out on the sunday and drove absolutely flat out um even you know, David Richards ordered a couple of Pro Drive, um, Pro Drive employees to go out into the into the stage and try to wave Colin down and try to slow him down, but it was to no avail. Um, Colin went past, you know, upshifting on the way past to make his point. Um, you know, these scenes are some of the the most famous in world rallying history, and of course, Colin went on to win the rally. Um, and um, when he when he came back to the service park after the rally. 
he was in a, a whole manner of trouble. Uh, and his team boss, David Richards, ordered him to check in late, um, thus taking a time penalty and handing the win to, to Carlos Sainz. Um, now, of course, Colin was, was very, very, very upset about this and um, an enormous argument ensued in front of all um, the world rallying media and TV cameras. So this whole this whole um, fiasco was played out like a you know played out like something in the theatre in front of all of the service park. And Colin McRae, you know, he, he that was who he was. He just was not going to accept this this team order. Um, but his again his father Jimmy McRae, who can cannot be thanked enough and cannot be praised enough for how much of an influence he had on on Colin's career at that time his dad talked him you know talked him talked him round and said look you know you're not going to you're not going to have a drive at the next rally if you don't accept this so i think it's, it's better you just toe the line and then go to Wales rally gb and and go and, and just go and win it um so so that was that was what the that was the goal so Colin you know Colin went to Wales rally gb with you know the level on points with Carlos Sainz uh, and he went and just absolutely blitzed the field. wasn't without wasn't without problem though. Um, you know, Colin had a puncture uh, mid stage, and stopping to repair that cost him a minute and thirty seconds. Now today in the World Rally Championship, if you lose that, it's rally over. You're never going to make that time back. Um, you know, most rallies now very rarely won by more than twenty seconds. Um, but Colin won 18 out of 28 stages on Wales Rally GP or RAC uh, at that time, um, which was just the most extraordinary performance. Um, and that was enough to win the World Rally Championship. And I, I, I vividly remember being five years old, sitting watching Sunday Grandstand, Sunday Grandstand with my mum watching Colin win the world title and the both of us just being so excited to see this see this brilliant Scotsman win the world title uh, and I remember he came into Chester Racecourse um, you know full stadium uh, at Chester Racecourse with the you know sc- saltire Scottish flag out the window and did doing donut after donut after donut in his in his Subaru Impreza WRC and I just thought this guy's the coolest guy in the world I mean why it's you know, forget forget Batman, forget Superman. Colin McRae is the ultimate superhero. Um, you know that that was what I I thought at the time, and to see him to see him win, and you watch, you know, you watch you watch these videos back now, and it's it's just such a such a wonderful such a wonderful some wonderful memory, and you know also it was a great day for the McRae family as well. What's what's not often reported is that his brother Alistair became British Rally Champion that day and was four, in fourth place behind the three factory Subarus, which were the dominant force uh, in in the field. So at that point that was when Colin really hit the big time and hit the front and back pages of all of the the newspapers in in Great Britain at that time and became that was what set him on but that was really him into into superstardom by that point he carried on for a couple more years at, at Subaru all the way to the end of 1998 so three more seasons and across those three seasons was beaten by um uh, the flying Finn Tommy Mackinnon who is now um the team manager for the Toyota World Rally team um but at that time Colin um you know Colin's big rival was was Tommy Mackinnon and Tommy Mackinnon won four world titles in a row racing for the Mitsubishi World Rally team and at that time it's it's an interesting point to to kind of pause in the story and explain just how big an impact rallying had on um, road car performance, road car sales in not just in Great Britain but but further afield. At that time, I, I can remember just the the growth of Subaru Impreza's coming onto the road, Mitsubishi Lancer Evos. You know, it was it became a real you know a real um, a little bit like Ford and Holden in Australia. It was either you're either an Evo guy or you're an Impreza guy. They were two quite. The two very similar ideas for cars, both rally replica cars, two liter turbo, fast, really really fast cars. Um, but you know maybe the Mitsubishi a bit more technical, the Subaru a bit more wild, a bit louder. Um, you know the at that time it was, you know Subaru in the early nineties was basically a farmer's runaround. Uh, that was all it is. It was it was not a boy racers car at all. It wasn't a petrol heads car. But Colin McRae single-handedly changed that. Colin McRae's 
um, you know, his performances, his driving style, his championship win changed the Subaru brand forever. You know, now a Subaru Impreza, if you ever mention a Subaru Impreza, you think that's a really fast car. That's a, you know, the, there's not many quicker cars you could drive across the country roads of Scotland than a Subaru Impreza. Um, you know, forget a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, you know, a well-driven Subaru Impreza will pretty much dust off anything. And that was... You know that would not be the case if it wasn't for for Colin McRae. The brand just wouldn't have been perceived in that in that way. So that's uh, something that I, I just find fascinating. And at the time, the Mitsubishi team, it was called called Rally Art, was run by um, another Scottish motorsporting legend, um, a guy called Andrew Cowan, who we sadly lost uh, um, a month or so ago. Um, who was he was the team manager um, for 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 Mitsubishi. It was a very successful career in his own right. But he was the team manager for Mitsubishi when. Tommy Mackinnon won all of his titles, um, beating Colin McRae. So, probably gives you an idea just how good a driver Tommy Mackinnon was. But so after three three more seasons at, at Subaru, it was time for for a change uh, for 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 Colin, and he signed for um, the Ford World Rally Team run by Malcolm Wilson and M Sport uh, in in Cumbria. And at the time. It was for an absolutely game-changing amount of money. I mean, at this time, they, they created just... A, it was never heard of before for a rally driver to be paid this amount of money. Um, in the independent um, newspaper in August 1998, it was reported that it was up to £6 million pounds a year. The, the the reports, like all these professional salary, driver salaries, they can be... Um, <laughs> they can be embellished slightly, um, but usually you see reports between three and six million pounds a year. In any case, an enormous amount of money. Even today, there will be very, very few world rally drivers who will be in that bracket of 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 payment. Um, you know, I remember when he, you know, when when Colin signed for for Ford to drive the new Focus, which was a car that was just being launched to to the public and is still, you know, a staple part of the Ford range. But at that time, the Ford Focus was just being launched, and to have Colin McRae there to endorse that product, well, pretty pretty powerful indeed. Strangely, you know, although Colin drove um for Ford from ninety nine to two thousand and two. Um, and Ford have, you know, they launched the Ford Focus RS in 2003, no, sorry, 2002 or 2003, I can't remember, but the, um, you know, the, the Ford's RS cars, which are, again, very, very impressive, fast cars, they've never really had the same association with Colin McRae, it's always been, um, it's always been Subaru that's been, you know, that have been so interlinked with, with, with Colin. Um, Colin's time at Ford uh, started off very, very um, well, very, very rocky. Um, to start, started off with a couple of mechanical uh, retirements, and probably was thinking, "Oh dear, what have, I, what have I done here? Going to to drive this new car?" But straight away in 1999, in just his third rally, he won the Safari Rally. Now, the Safari Rally in uh, in in Africa is is always been renowned as one of the toughest rallies in the world, even just to finish, let alone win. So, for this brand new car, um, it was incredible for Colin to, to to drag it to the finish, and then winning again in Portugal. So, getting two two rally wins uh, in, at the early st- stage of his of his Ford career was very impressive. But the remainder of the season was just a disaster with lots of accidents, lots of um, mechanical failures and really not the really not the start they they were wanting and if you look down you know Colin's time at Ford you know his it, where he won his rallies are just incredible he won in 99 he won in Portugal in the Safari rally in 2000 won at Catalonia a tarmac event and then again at the Acropolis in Greece a very very tough event in 2001 he had three wins Argentina Cyprus and Greece three really rough rough and rugged and tough tough rallies in 2002 you know winning the safari rally and winning again acropolis so it's just this i find it absolutely fascinating that you know colin's driving style was always flat out um or you know or nothing and you wouldn't expect that all these really tough rallies that expect that you know that demand a really measured approach it's just extraordinary to see, you know, Colin was able to adapt his style and and calm down and and go and win these win these rallies. It's just I find it such a curious thing, um, as well. 
but you know the stats for <laughs> the Colin stats though for his his time at Ford definitely um <laughs> definitely show his win it or bin it style. He had nine wins in four years, but he had eight crashes and thirteen mechanical retirements in that time. So it was very much an up and down time uh, at uh, at Ford. However, the two thousand and one season was where it all it all came it all came good. In 2001, he went into the final round uh, of the RAC Rally in Great Britain, head-to-head with adversary Richard Burns. Now, Colin and Richard Burns were two very, very different characters. You know, Colin was wild. He was he was out of control. He was, you know, flat out or nothing. Whereas Burns was more technical. He had a more more measured driving style. He was smoother. Um, you know, he would he would gladly, you know, pick up a second, a third, a fourth, and accumulate points. He was very much more, um, you know, meticulous li- like that. So they were totally different characters. And the British press and the rallying press really, really kind of built up this rivalry between the two between the two drivers and. Of course, Colin didn't mind playing a little bit up t- up to that, but understandably, behind the behind the scenes, they had an immense um, immense respect for each other. And one story which I I absolutely love, which um, uh, Robbie Reed, um, Richard Burns' co-driver, told um, on a podcast with Motorsport Magazine a few years ago, um, basically told the story about when when Colin was at Subaru but was a little bit unhappy and was looking to move to Ford at that time. Richard was looking to make a move to um to Subaru so they um together they basically were in cahoots to make sure that they both got the best deal that they possibly could so they clearly um <laughs> they clearly got on quite well but unbeknown to to the press and probably unbeknown to their respective team managers uh, at that at that point but in 2001 the showdown between McRae and Burns probably epitomized the difference between the two of them in 2001 you know Colin basically in Wales Rally GB he went absolutely flat out uh, and was beating Richard Burns um in the Subaru and um, looking like he was going to clinch a second world title but unfortunately in a very very fast right hander Colin took a big big cut um, across the corner dropped his right hand wheel into a ditch and which piked the car into a huge accident with massive pirouette flipping through the air uh, and ending his rally and his championship chances right there and then and and, and handing the, the, the title to, to, to Richard Burns so uh, by the end of 2002, Colin's time at um, at Ford had had ended. At that time, he you know reportedly had, um, according to Ford at the time, in the press were saying that Colin had a demand of five million pounds a year, um, and uh, Ford decided not to not to keep him on and use some of the budget to develop their car and to back some younger drivers uh, in, instead. And Colin went off to drive for the Citroen World World Rally team now. At this point, it's interesting to note that Ford, at that time, they made the clear change in policy. They weren't going to go go big and spend a lot on a big name driver like Colin McRae on a big, you know, champion, ra- multiple rally winner, dra- you know, big name driver. They were going to, you know, try and develop talent. Interestingly, Ford never won another world drivers' title all the way until 2017, when. Funnily enough, they signed a very big name driver in the guise of Sebastian Ogier. Now, you know, Sebastian Ogier at that time would, was a bit, signing of a Sebastian Ogier in the end of 2016 was exactly the same um, as as hiring somebody like Colin McRae at that time. You know, it was the, hiring the biggest name driver. It's going to cost you, but they will they will deliver. And Sebastian Ogier delivered for what is now M Sport Ford. It's not a full factory team anymore. Um, but I think I th- I found that interesting that um, as soon as the policy was changed to to go and bring in a top line driver, um, the uh, <laughs> the, uh, the 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 success came, and I think that that says a lot for um, how in rallying the driver can really make a big big difference as well, and certainly Colin and um, to give him his due, Sebastian Ogier do as well. 
Sadly, once the forty era was over for for Colin, really his his World Rally Championship successes were were behind him at that point. He had one season with Citroen in two thousand and three in the new kind of era of World Rally car, which required a much more smooth and in line driving style, which didn't really suit Colin. And he only managed one podium in the opening rally uh, at at Monte Carlo. But there was, as always with with Colin, there was always something exciting to happen. In 2005, um, he he came back to the World Rally Championship for two more rounds um, in um, Australia and Wales Rally GB. Now, in Australia in 2005, he had one of his most famous drives um, at the wheel of the Skoda Fabia VRS WRC. Now, the Skoda Fabia at that time was, was not a was not a um, preferred car, uh, not a competitive car. Nowadays, Skoda in in rallying are very, very successful and are the dominant force in um, WRC2 and in the R5 category of of rallying. And if you buy a Skoda R5 car, you're giving yourself a good chance of of, of winning rallies. But at at that time, Skoda Motorsport was very much in its early, early days. Um, And in 2005, um, Colin and his co-driver, Nicky Grist, were looking like winning uh, sorry they were looking like getting on the podium in australia in 2005 and it was just creating so many headlines unfortunately um at one of the, the final service points the skoda mechanics decided to to do a, a regular clutch change uh, and unfortunately um weren't able to complete the clutch change in the in the time uh, and were disqualified from uh, the rally, which was such a shame, but really the 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 point had been made that not only um, Colin still very much ha- still had the speed, but also I think that was the first point where Skoda really were put on the map uh, as um, a, a force to be reckoned with in rallying, and and Colin dragging the car up certainly 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 made that that that, that clear. Um, I remember at the time, um, you know, at that time, Skoda were, were launching their VRS performance brand, which is still a, very much a part of the, the range to this day. And um, my mum, uh, back in 2004, bought one of the very first Fabia VRS hot hatchbacks. Um, and at that time, it was quite unusual. It was a diesel powered, um, turbo diesel powered hot hatchback. And I remember so many happy memories of tearing around uh, um, in the passenger seat of my, uh, with my with my mum in the Fabia VRS, which I then later came on to to own and and um, put into a field Colin McRae style just <laughs> uh, as as well. But I remember the excitement when when it was announced that Colin would be driving a VRS Skoda Fabia just like the one my mum had, and that was I thought at the time that was just so cool. And I think pretty much anything any car that that Colin McRae would 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 get into it just had such a such an impact on people. And I don't think we've really ever seen. And the likes, uh, definitely not seen the likes of him um, ever since. After his his world rally career, Colin had a few um, forays into other parts of of motorsport. In in 2004, he went to Le Mans uh, and drove for ProDrive in the beautiful Ferrari 550 uh, GT1 car alongside um, two two of my favourite drivers of all time, Darren Turner, a Le Mans legend, and Rickard Rydell, a fantastic British touring car driver um, for Volvo back in the 1990s. Uh, and wrote, read a story about you know Colin driving alongside um, driving alongside these guys and Darren Turner saying you know Colin came into the team as a you know World Rally champion but he was so humble and always wanted to ask for advice and was just you know they stayed at a chateau near Le Mans um, spent lots of you know lots of time relaxing having a few beers having a good time and um, you know is when you hear about someone like Darren Turner who's been at Le Mans for nearly twenty years saying that it was is um, one of his most favourite and most enjoyable times at Le Mans it kind of tells you tells you two things it tells you just just the character of of colin and how how people warmed him so much but also le mans is um you know it's a 24-hour race for a start it's a race circuit racing (laughs) it's um you know it's a completely different discipline in motorsport altogether but the fact he could get in there jump in a car like that and 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 they got on the podium in the gt1 class uh in that that year just shows you just how just how adaptable he, he was um, went to race in the Dakar with 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 Nissan, um, and actually back in his earlier career, 
1992 completed one round in the British Touring Car Championship and if you ever get the chance go on to YouTube and try and find some footage of this because it's absolutely hilarious. Colin was in a, a pro drive BMW in the British Touring Car Championship at Knock Hill uh, and ended up uh, ended up taking Matt Neal who's still racing in the British Touring Car Championship to this day um, ended up taking Matt Neal out of the race and in doing so um, angering Matt's father Neil uh, quite considerably and you know so even though he'd only raced for one one time in the uh, British Touring Car Championship, he uh, <laughs> he uh, he certainly um, certainly left uh, certainly left uh, an impression. So that's that's the story uh, of of Colin McRae's career. Um, it's a it's a checkered career, you know. It's, a, it's some incredible successes uh, and some some real downs as well. But I think that again, that just what what, what makes him. You know, makes him so special to 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 so many people, and it's and you know he's he's sorely sorely missed. Um, even to this day, um, you'll see Subaru and Pretzers running around. They've been on the road for twenty years, and you'll see the little sticker on the back. You know, Colin McRae, even doubt, flat out, and uh, that was well, just what what he's what he's left behind is 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 is, is so 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 special, and and he he really will really will be missed and I, I really hope that this podcast has done a little bit of justice to what made him so what made him great and um and why um he's so fondly remembered so um thank you for listening uh, i really really appreciate it and i look forward to speaking to you again very soon with our next episode of the icons of scottish motorsport series thank you very much <laughs>